I'd like to call, We're on. call this meeting to order at 5.01 on September 20th. This emphasized that we need to say that at the beginning of each. So the videographer knows. Well, I was going to say, although I apparently already know that you know, we're asking people to wear masks I will know that. inside. If they're if they're not speaking, if they're speaking, they don't, if they're speaking, they don't have to wear a mask. Is that a state thing, a governor thing? Um, the, yeah, camera, the camera's rolling. I can't really stay with that camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a, uh, okay. So, I'll call correct. the meeting to order. Yes. And it was an ordinance. It was an ordinance. We have, before doing the minutes and all, just for the record, we have. Can introduce yourself? Oh, I'm, I'm Emily Seibel, um, the executive director of Yellow Spring of Yellow Springs Home Aid. I'm Tony Dosick, and I'm the project director of Livable, Equitable, Age Friendly Yellow Springs, sponsored by the Senior Center. I'm Marilyn Moyer, township resident. Dino Palata, Dino's Cappuccinos. And we have Carol Simmons from Carol Springston. And we do not have our both our road superintendent and our fire chief are on vacation. This may be a remarkably short meeting. Uh, adoption of minutes. <clears throat> you don't need your mask if you're speaking. You're welcome, whatever. But right, thank you. The rule. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of August 16th. So moved. I'll second. That was a special meeting. It's, no, September. Excuse me, it's a special one. <coughs> the 15th. Do we have any comments about the 16th? Any changes? Uh, the 16th. Is that all? I did not see that. Um, yeah, don't it. <laughs> at the very bottom road department report, uh, and we talked about this, uh, kind of road improvements are progressing with edging schedule on Tobias in September. We talked with the would be paving in September. Thank you. Got it. Any other it? changes? Did you say that's it? No, I said that's it. So moved for adoption. Uh, we already moved and seconded. All right. Uh, yes. Call roll, please. Mr. Mucher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Minutes of September 8th. <laughs> I move for adoption. I second. Any additions or corrections? I have a few. Please let us know. <laughs> First one, uh, I would suggest, uh, please, that under second adoption minutes, somewhere in there, it's minutes of the 16th of August 16th, so people... Oh, so we can postpone the adoption of August 16th. Of August 16th. Okay. Next page, right in the middle. It says after conversation regarding staffing issues, uh, I would suggest we put after conversation regarding paramedic staffing issues because that's really all we were speaking of that evening okay. is the replacement of para paramedics uh, there. And then at the second or well, third line, it says additionally wages of current, uh, uh, we should add that the paramedic aid staff will be adjusted accordingly. Okay. So it's not just an overall yeah. thing. And, and then just for fun, under cemetery report, says the old shack has been completely removed. I thought perhaps we'd put the old shed. <laughs> the old shack. That's right. Right. I was being real. <laughs> you were being real. The long shack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
That's all I have. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I would like to, can we have the roll, please? Sure, Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Thank you. Then I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes of the special meeting September 15th. So moved. Second. Any changes? Not I. Uh, we might just let people know this was uh, changing an amendment to permanent appropriations that we were shifting to. The minutes say adopt resolution, and the resolution is not here, but we, we shifted. Uh, what, a total of $7,500 from one line item to another. Two different line item shifts. Not real big, but you have to vote on them. Uh, call the roll, please. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Before, well, it's after talking about bills, we can talk about today's agenda. Um, entertain a motion to approve payment of bills in the amount, total amount of $179,386.73. And the general fund, $4,226.73. From fire, $20,569.72. From cemetery, $2,108.30. EMS billing, $1,411.03. Road and bridge, $1,871.29. And from capital project, $150,610.50. Do I hear a motion? I move for approval. Payment. I'll second. Did you get, was that including Fillmore's final payout? Yeah, Fillmore and J5. Okay. So I believe that's the so end of the story. So is Fix that it. it, the end, the last capital project that is last payments for this building? Congratulations. Left us. Uh, Seventy-five thousand in the hole, oh. which we had to take from the general fund. Although we had a, we had anticipated having to, to draw down almost three hundred and fifty thousand dollars out of the general fund when we were, before we started building this report. Well, that was required by USDA mm -hmm. that we have. Yeah, that we had to build in. Yeah. yeah. Luckily, we didn't need to use it. Um, did we already vote on that? No. Nope. Nope. I'd like, would you call the roll? Sure. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> now, before going through correspondence, I know we have two folks here for a specific. Uh, we won't have a fire department report. We won't have a cemetery road report. Take all the time you like. Uh, we'll, I'm imagining it'll be about 15 minutes before we would, unless you need to do it now and leave. Yeah. Make you listen to our minutia. We're, we're good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll zip through the correspondence to see if there's anything we want to turn into a business item. Um, so we've got the ISC September 24 meeting packet, and I don't know what that is. Uh, we'll get to that later. So you want that to be new business? Well, no, it'll actually be in standing committee report. Okay. Uh, The ARP NEU tracking application for funding. It's already been done. Um, 
Regional Planning Commission meeting packet. Uh, and that's really for you. Mm -hmm. um, email from Dayton Barnes regarding design details. That's for the new shack. Shed. Or shed, I mean. A memo about participation in Ohio Siting Board workshops. Cement project cost, cost quote from Fillmore Construction, and that's for the new shed also. Okay. <clears throat> Board of Zoning Appeals will be meeting September 23rd, so the meeting details memo. Uh, Ohio Deferred Compensation September newsletter. Email requesting use of meeting room every Monday, which I replied to. Uh, Ohio Township Association Legislative Alerts for September 10 and 17. Green County Township Association September 14 meeting, which I did go to. Uh, Auditor of State Fall Update. Star Ohio Annual Report 2021 and monthly summary. That's our investment fund, right? Mm -hmm. Bedrock elevations map from Richard Zoff, which we will be using with the uh, Kingwood project review. Uh, Medicounts, Medicare, ground ambulance, date, question and answer. What in the world is that about? Medicount is the people that collect our money, clip <coughs> money from um, ambulance runs. And they would they have a question and answer session about the latest data or something like that. <coughs> That's a fire department thing. Spoon update letter. Local government officials conference survey. MVRPC's TAC meeting cancellation announcement which means I don't have a report on that. Mm -hmm. ODOT's Transportation Stimulus Program, notice from County Auditor Graham regarding market value real estate change. Uh, I'll just mention that he will be in this room October 6th for general information about property taxes. Uh, that's the McKee group. Uh, fund status, revenue status, and appropriation status for 920. So there's no new business from that, right? More correspondence. Okay. Can you tell me what the? Yes. <laughs> this is this is fresh. Got it today. This is from Don Hollister. Oh, yeah. That will be a new business. We'll put that in old business, rather. Uh, we got a letter from Sign Dynamics for, 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 for producing our new sign for the, for the entrance way. Uh, no date, but it's in production now. That's good. A, uh, it's out, an outside sign. Mm -hmm. It'll be on the wall outside, the front door. Um, an email from uh, Robin Weissing, who lives on State Route 343, who, who we've uh, corresponded with numerous times over the years. Uh, and this particular time, uh, she's concerned about the uh, increase in traffic on 343 from heavy trucks uh, traveling to and from the quarry in Cedarville. And she says, I've noticed a number of instance, instances when the drivers were air braking along the route. Uh, would you consider having a <clears throat> no braking sign installed along the route the length of 343? The noise is especially noticeable between Meredith Road and, 60 <clears throat> and Route 68. Uh, but truckers are also engine brake to the east of us on the curb. Thanks in advance for your consideration. And she also mentions a speed limit uh, study that ODOT did um, earlier in the year and wondered if there had been a uh, determination on that. She had asked. She had asked us to ask ODOT to reduce the speed limit uh, 
uh, in the middle of, uh, around the intersection of 68 and Meredith Road to uh, reduce the potential of accidents. And uh, I, I don't have the result of that study at this point, but I'll follow up on that. Um, regarding the engine brake question, um, we do have the ability to post no engine brake signs, but only on township roads and or on in township jurisdictions. Uh, interestingly enough, we were asked to go in to uh, <coughs> uh, together with Village of Yellow Springs and post no brake no engine brake signs on 68 North coming into town. <coughs> Just. Uh, just about where this Glenport Cemetery East entrance is, somewhere around, right around there, uh, because that's 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 township jurisdiction until it gets to the village of Yellow Springs Corporation sign, which is just uh, just about where the Glenport Cemetery the west sign is. It's about in the middle of that. <coughs> Just before it, and so uh, we did. We went through the resolutions and voting and everything to, to have those done. Yeah. I'm not sure if they're up yet, but they could be because I believe I saw one. Did you? Uh, they're put up by the um, Green County uh, Engineers Office, not not by us or the, or the village. And there is another one going up if it's if it's not up on 343, just to the um, what would be the uh, just be uh, what would be the um, the east of the village limits, uh, which are now. Well, see, this is a problem because that all of Glen is in the village, but then uh, townships on the other side. So that I'm not sure where they're going to put that sign so on, on which road. Three forty three. So. Is that a direct answer to her? Uh, well, it will be as direct as I can get, because after that, that's a state road. And mm -hmm. only the state has, has the ability to put those signs up. And I could ask them uh, when I'm asking about the you know, this study, the speed study. But we can't make that decision. And you gave me a name once here. Or uh, who do we call when we? Have questions about intersections. Oh, uh, I have been dealing with with a state rep, Tommy Thompson. Okay, ODOT, and I can give you his contact information if you desire. I have it. He's District Eight. All right. Uh, those are all my correspondences. So that will give us <coughs> when we get to new and old business. Uh, the new business. Have a link, which may relate to the <coughs> art. Anyway, I'll, I'll bring up the things that came from our art public comment meeting under old business. And what did you have for old business? Uh, no, no, no. You, what you wanted to bring up with the, that that was the standing committee report. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Let's go ahead. Any other agenda items for the public that you want to have talked about later? No fire department report, no cemetery or road report because those folks are on vacation. Fiscal officers. Do you have a copy of that resolution? Uh, I have one little thing on the cemetery. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been in Glen Forest in the last few days, uh, you might go through it and look where the old shack used to be and is now a dirt, you know, just a, just a flat dirt. And I've laid out exactly where the columbarium garden mm -hmm. 
something or another is going to be and have staked out where the column bearers themselves are going to be on that. I have not seen that. I, when I was there, it was just they hadn't taken the pad out yet. Mm. So that, that's all ready for the cement people to, to come and, and dig out and, and lay the cement, including the, the new shed to the other side of it. And I'm also, there's a six foot uh, separation between the columbarium pad and the, the new shed. And I've uh, purchased five arborvitaes to put in that six foot area, 10 foot high. And they're meant to be a screen between the two. Is that what the, the bill was? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that, that's meant to be a screen between the two. But now Yeah. <laughs> okay. So which, which cemetery is it that you're talking about? The new Glenmore? No, the old Glenmore Cemetery. Okay. This is where the, the old maintenance shed used to be um, just after you drive in about halfway along the little road. Sort of on the south used to be a green building. Mm -hmm. Kind of a silverish roof was there, and it's not there anymore. <clears throat> there will be a small green building uh, to the uh, to the east of where that was, and then where the green building was predominantly will be an area uh, that will have two uh, columbariums that uh, hold um, 50 burial niches for ashes, uh, 25 per side. And those will be uh, coming the first of the year. Great. So we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of room for additional ones when the time comes, too. I, I, I placed out mm -hmm. uh, additional ones for those. So so I think that's a good, one. a good initiative. Um, the only other thing, as long as we're talking about those, I, I'm sorry I should have gone back. Go ahead. Did you notice? Yeah. Yeah. The, the yellow tape outside the yes. fire Here. department door. In, in the original landscaping um, design for the mm -hmm. building, that area was had boxwoods that were planted mm -hmm. in the perimeter of the patio, meant to grow and be a, you know kind of a separation between where they will potentially you know they were, they're going to buy picnic tables or something and then put the grill that they had donated mm -hmm. out there. So that in a good, good weather, they can they can be outside, and the the box was were originally meant to to separate them from the parking lot and you know, everything else. Uh, and so I I put those uh, I put those uh, um, yellow tapes down so the fire department people could visualize that's the area that, that was was laid out. And of course, Colin's not here tonight, so you know, not that it's that big a deal. But, um, so we'll just leave it um, for another meeting and then have him decide if we want to go ahead with that, mm -hmm. um, which we can do. And uh, Dan would then just excavate that, um, that, that area. Has Jason said when he's going to deliver trees? No, I don't know. Um, I have actually, uh, I don't know if you notice the two stakes that are out there, those are where, and you and I talked about mm -hmm. where potentially uh, and an area would be to put those two uh, hawthorns that I committed to. Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking of maybe a magnolia as the one, at the, the one that's surrounded by curb. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean we can talk about. It. I didn't know which one. I didn't know if you bought any. If you I committed did order anything more, yeah. uh, we can talk about that later. So, all right. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hold you up. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're bou bouncing back to cemeteries and. Yep. Sort of fire when we're talking about okay, station well, I'm, I'm done ban bouncing then. It's <laughs> okay. Uh, but we will be planting trees later this fall. Fiscal officer's report. Yep. Um, resolution 2021-33, uh, amendment of permanent appropriations. And for those of you that are new to this, our function here, we do this a lot. We have to increase money or decrease. But anyway, whereas it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township, now therefore the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations and the general fund uh, increased contracted services by $3,200. And the uh, fire fund, I increased salaries by $40,000. That'll get us through a few pay periods. And we'll figure out what we're going to do after that. And um, 
also increased um, employee reimbursements by $1,500. <clears throat> and the Miami Township Trustees authorized the fiscal officer to do so immediately. <clears throat> Where did you get the 40000 From the fire fund. It was in there already. I just, it was unappropriated. Mm -hmm. How much is left in unappropriated? I don't have the report right from you, but you do. Under appropriations. Uh, let me know if it's up on here. I think there's um probably about another two hundred and fifty thousand, maybe. I'm trying to remember. I think there was about a million expected in revenues for the fire fund. And we've spent or currently appropriated seven hundred and fifty nine thousand seven hundred and fifty seven dollars. <throat> that includes seventy five thousand nearly for um maybe towards an apparatus. I would have preferred you had, had taken those amounts that I had given you to, to move over into that um, salary line, which were at the point at, uh, a month or so ago, we talked about it, that it was over $50,000 that was available to be uh, put in there without having to go into unappropriated funds. And, You know, the money that we have left is also not only has to go through, uh, keep us in the rest of September, but all of October, all of November, all of December, all of January, all of February, all of March, till the 1st of April, uh, at roughly forty to 60000 a month. Um, hmm. that's, that's approximately six months at 50000 so you're, you're at $300,000. Uh, necessary to get to their next distribution in, in April. Um, just I, the, the, the money, it doesn't matter. To me, it's the, the, what you had suggested previously a few months ago was taking $2,000 here and 5000 there mm -hmm. and moving that monies around. And some of those accounts weren't able to even cough up that money by the time we got to it because I'd already spent it on other things. Um, <clears throat> I guess I feel like that money is going to come from somewhere, and um, like there's a large amount of unappropriated money in the fire fund, and we're going to make and we need a lot of it now, or for the next couple of payrolls. And um, I'm sorry, but I didn't realize that you expected me to do that for tonight's meeting. Uh, so, mm, okay, yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Um, we, we've gone if over. If you want to do something different about this, we can table this resolution. But I'm going to need. But it, the bottom line is, we do not have enough money in salaries sure. right now. I, I know that's why I tried to get this money transferred. To pay, to pay on Monday, to pay payroll on I Monday. Know. That's why I tried to get this money moved over the last couple of months. Um, I wasn't clear on that. And you know, we talk about unappropriated money, but as I say, it may not be unappropriated, but it's going to be necessary to have between now and, and April. Exactly. And um, there it is. <laughs> There's some of it. <laughs> And we need it in salaries as a priority, for sure. Yeah, but there's there's ways of putting it in there. There's uh, and the way that I had wanted to do it was to have unused money moved over into the salaries fund, money that was appropriated at the beginning of the year and not used to the extent that it was anticipated to be used to to date to move that into the uh, and uh, I would say moving forward um, we can do that but well however, okay. you want to, however you want to solve the problem tonight because this yeah. is our meeting no, to, I, I, you know, I for salary so I agree well it is as long as it as long as I can give you some figures that will move <clears throat> at, a, uh, at a at a next recent meeting sure. you know and yeah. not have to uh, wait oh. a couple of months. No, no, I, I think we're going to work on it together, Chris. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, I, I feel like this is a follow up to my comment at the last meeting where I was saying that the fire fund is going to be the only thing that we have to worry about. Well, I think we should have some have some projections before we raise uh, wages. Mm -hmm. And I understood 
I agreed, I went ahead uh, with the immediate adding of seven dollars an hour because uh, we didn't want to lose more EMTs. Uh, but I, the notion of figuring out how much that was adding over the next whatever it is, six months, nine months. Okay, stands. And then what you're talking about is that you, part of that you had addressed by, as I understand it, pulling it from a series of funds that looked like they were not going to be spent down mm -hmm. before we drew from mm -hmm. the unappropriated reserves. Well, we yeah. just go. Excuse me, just one second. Yes, okay. just, just going backwards in, in, or back in, in what you were saying. Let's just say we did that projection. Let's say the projection was at a six month period, we were going to be $115,000 in the hole. Mm -hmm. What would have been your solution either now at the projection point or then when we're in the hole? What, which, which, which would have been the best way to go? How would you have handled that loss? I probably would have left uh, the already appropriated lines that looked like they had more than they need in it and taken from reserves and cleaned it all up later. But it's, we have money and we're spending more money. Mm -hmm. And the question is, do we take it from six different places mm -hmm. that's already appropriated or seem to me an easier thing would be to take a chunk from the reserves and then at the end of the year we we say, oh yep, we have excess money from these other appropriated funds. Certainly certainly possible. And as Margaret can attest to in my little forest gump mind, uh, I like to see, you know, I like to see the piggy bank open up and say there's a pile here, mm -hmm. there's a pile here, and there's a pile here. Now, if this pile needs some money and this pile doesn't need any money, we'll just push that into this one. If this one still needs the money and this still needs the money and this still needs the money, then we'll get it from, from another pile, a bigger pile over here. <coughs> but we won't know that this one needs it until these two have, have had what's extra in them moved over. I do this, you know, I'm, I've done this forever. You know, I've done we, this little. We've had versions of this. Done this little chat conversation. Yeah, right. Other times, and, and we, we just had again. different personalities <laughs> about budgeting. <laughs> right. Uh, they both work. Yeah. Ultimately, you know, we want to yeah, we want to use all the money that we can out of the fire fund before we have to contribute from the general fund. Exactly. So. My thoughts. Uh, exactly. <clears throat> However, we do need to cover payroll this coming week. Oh, then I will move for uh, adoption of resolution 21 33. Mm -hmm. Yes. I will second. Is it clear as much for everybody? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, call the uh, roll then. Please call the roll. Mr. Hoster? Yes. Mr. Mutra? Yes. You can tell we have a very different style of meeting than many other folks on the uh, This being the second meeting of the month, we'll have standing committee reports. Uh, first one would be MBRPT, that would be me. And we met uh, last month, and um, it was a it was a very short meeting, actually. I'm surprised we met, but we're not going to meet next month, so that's probably why they decided to have it. But uh, we did some housekeeping information. Uh, we did a, a uh, kind of a review of the ISC um, committee, which will be meeting this coming Friday. Um, what does that stand for? You're going okay, to ask me. I take it back. <laughs> I will get you that. Yeah. Uh, um, and that's predominantly what it was. And the regional planning committee was exactly the opposite. We we just did reviewed subdivision after subdivision after subdivision and zoning issues <coughs> from uh, from uh, Beaver Creek Township and uh, 
Or on Silver, no, Spring Valley Township, yeah. <coughs> Table one of Miami Townships. Uh, and we will meet tomorrow. Yeah, that's right, tomorrow afternoon at an executive committee. So, so there, and the Grinnell Mill. All right, here's the exciting news of tonight. There's a huh? You found something to work for free at the Grinnell Mill? No, not yet. <laughs> I'll work on that. There is a long ladder leaning up against the mill. <laughs> that means there will be a roof. That's, don't get ahead of yourself here, Don. <laughs> it means there's a long ladder leaning up against the side of the building. This was, this was the week. Thank you, Mother Nature. This was the week that was uh, potentially to, to put the new roof on. It's been waiting since, what, August of last year? Roofless. But we do have three days next week that are in a window that can be done also. So, fingers crossed. That's my report. I'd like to see who climbs that ladder. <laughs> I'll watch. Uh, we need to change the list of standing committee reports. Let's, let's put back the MV, the RPC TAC. Transportation Advisory okay. mm -hmm. uh, Commission Committee. Uh, and let's take out Yellow Springs Senior Center. Mark is not mm -hmm. going to that, so. Mm -hmm. uh, the TAC meeting was canceled, so I have no report on that. Um, Clifton Union Cemetery has not met. And Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation. I'm not sure I can do justice to it compared to all the stuff on Facebook and, and in the Yellow Springs News, but uh, our work with the Wellness Center is still pending agreement with the college. Mm -hmm. We've been the various subcommittees that have been doing some work getting ready for that, but that has, we don't have an agreement with the college yet. Uh, and at the school superintendent's request, uh, we are on alert if depending on the results of this coming election, whether or not uh, the school levy passes uh, and Mills Lawn was going to no longer be a school, they asked the Development Corporation to be thinking about it. Uh, and we're talking of doing a study and that kind of thing maybe six months from now. It's not happening before the election. It's, uh, it's fascinating how news can be twisted. But the Development Corporation, depending on the school board and the village's actions, might be involved in uh, examining possible uses of uh, Mills Law. Did I misunderstand? I thought the DC, YSDC was doing a, a study whether the levy passed or it didn't okay. in either case, no? Okay. Uh, or, I, or I misunderstood the meeting. It is. Carol would know. Tony. Tony would know. Well, I, I wasn't at the meeting, but I do, my understanding is the study has nothing to do with the levy. The study is to do with what does the community want and, and think, of, think should happen with the land if the school moves. Not, and it's a community, it's, it's to obtain community input in a very broad way about, um, uh, about the possible use of that land. So it's not tied to the levy 
at all. Uh, that's that's contrary to what I uh, remember from that meeting. I, 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 I was not at the meeting, and the reason why I know that, I, I think it's not a secret, my husband, Len Kramer, um, is, is leading the effort um, to work with a mm -hmm. consultant um, from a group in Cleveland who does these kind of large-scale well, communities. It sounds communities. like you know more about it than I, and I was yeah, in the Yeah, but I'm not prepared. I, and I, wasn't, I yeah, that's what I definitely know. didn't understand it to be yeah, it, I, a it, pending it, thing. It, it, a it is a, thing. It, it, in fact, when I left him, he was on a meeting about with a group, including the school superintendent mm -hmm. and uh, the person from Cleveland, and if you are well, then I it sounds right. like you're right, but that is not what I remember. From I know. Does that jive with the, what I understand is that the YSDC is looking to form a subcommittee as soon as possible? Um, again, it's that is work, not it's what already reaching out to people in town. This is great. This is great. <laughs> I, I know of people that they, they've been I will be on the phone later to, tonight. To, to form a subcommittee, and that then the subcommittee be, would be in at some point engaging in a community process right. to figure out or to find out what what people want to happen there. Right, and they are hiring a consultant. They did. They looked at four different firms, which. Uh, wow. Yeah, it was a big, I know this, this started, you know, mm -hmm. happening in my house. Um, <laughs> so um, they looked at four different so firms and, and we are they glad did you a are lot here of tonight. diligence about it and chose <clears throat> one that would, had the most experience with mm -hmm. doing very broad community surveys because they want to make absolutely sure they're getting as broad a viewpoint of this community about what could happen on that site. If to your, to your credit, moves. Don, you did say there were various it, subcommittees. It's no longer needed as a right. school. Right, it's <laughs> no longer needed it. But, okay. So, okay. but, but maybe it would be good. Um, I will be on the phone tonight okay. finding out. Okay. The phrase is, what the hell is going on? Oh, I knew. Yeah. Close. But playing devil's advocate, unless a levy passed, the school would continue to be used as it is. There's, there's no way it would be torn down or moved or not okay. used if the levy didn't pass and they had another school. Am I, or am I missing something? No, I, I think your point is well made. I'm, I'm not prepared uh -huh. to speak officially in any capacity. <laughs> <laughs> so I, this has to be quote off the record, I guess. Uh, it's too late. Well, the camera's rolling. The newspaper's here. The camera's I, I, I want to make a, a, a caveat. I mean, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. answering from what I. I, I know mm -hmm. the, it, it's not impossible to imagine that everything just stays status quo, but that will be from this community. The community survey is going ahead mm -hmm. gotcha. regardless. Gotcha. You kept saying um, they were studying uses for the land. Did you miss the, the whole shebang? The the, uh, everything. everything. It's to mm -hmm. what to do with that, the with that the parcel, the building. How, how to use that, 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 eight, it's eight acres, I believe, actually. Maybe nine. But yeah, yeah, it's quite large. I think people don't realize. I didn't have any idea. I was just telling you right that so. Well, uh, very Maybe. interesting. This is, this is <laughs> Would good. you mind giving me your last name again? It's Tor, it's Dosik, spelled D as in David, O, S as in Sam, I, K. K, all right. That was close. Thank you. Uh, well, that was record. my uh, Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation report. <laughs> but Tony, what you said isn't for the the newspaper, right? No. I'm just this, I am not speaking. I'm not speaking, but I think it's important to interview the, the folks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not for attribution, isn't that? <laughs> now for <laughs> that ends standing committee reports. Uh, We'll call it new business, although it may relate to ARP. Home Inc. Would welcome. Thank you. I think we can take our mask. Do you want me to have something? Uh, yeah, sure. 
Well, I, I wanted to speak to the most important news of the night, which is the tall ladder at the Grinnell Mill. I just let you know that one of my first jobs after I went to Antioch College was working at the mill right after it opened. And I used to give historical tours and like clean up and <laughs> welcome guests. I won't do it for free again, but I <laughs> I love the mill. I just wanted to let you know I have a lot of Well we have a position open. <laughs> well double what you made last time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um so we're here because we, I came to the ARPA funding uh, community open house and Don suggested that I come to speak with the, the full um, township trustee in, in the official meeting context. And so I put together a little one pager to try to kind of summarize our conversation, which is um, that we have a project and we think it would be a really good fit for ARPA funds and would help to leverage additional funding from outside of the township in to serve residents through permanently affordable housing. And I brought along Tony Dosick, who is, wears a lot of hats, um, but Tony, would you like to say why you're here? Well, so we, we I, as, as I, I told you I'm, I'm the project director for Livable Equitable Aid Friendly Young Springs, which is part of a national, uh, nationwide group of communities. There are nine in Ohio. We're one of the, we, I think we are the smallest. Uh, we're one of the, um, and um, that are age-friendly communities. And age-friendly communities um, work on eight domains of livability. Um, I, I won't go through all of them. We work closely with the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission's um, Livability um, Institute and around issues of, of, um, of those eight domains, housing, social inclusion, um, parks and recreation, there, there are others. And when the ARPA funds came out, the AARP produced a report, um, which is here, um, basically giving advice um, to age-friendly communities about how those funds could be utilized to, around those eight domains, um, and how they fit into the ARPA criteria. And one of them, um, which of course caught um, my attention and, and Emily's attention um, was that these funds can be used to uh, provide um, housing um, for, um, for seniors, um, more housing solutions for older adults by increasing affordable housing options. This is actually a line right from the report. I'm happy to send this to anyone. It's kind of interesting to read what they, they um, you know, they have, ARP has wonderful resources which they provide to us. Um, and so they kind of did the overview of these billions of dollars. And, and so um, when we realized that there's a possibility that, um, that these ARPA funds could be used for housing for seniors, we started to talk about how that actually could happen here in the township and here in those Springs. And then um, just, it, based on guidance from the National Low Income Housing Coalition and the Ohio CDC Association, the ARPA money can be used towards um, the affordable house, creating affordable housing in general too, not just for seniors, but of course that's where we overlap. And so you know that the Community Land Trust owns 1.8 acres that you can see from your house. Your firehouse. <laughs> <laughs> Where we're sitting now. And um, and so it's currently zoned for up to 28 units of housing without any variances. Um, the land is owned by Home Inc. and it's slated for affordable housing development. Now that we've finished our $2.29 million Glen Cottages Pocket neighborhood, we are pivoting and are completely focused on this, this piece of land, which we need to create a plan for now. Um, 
which is kind of honoring the terms of the financing and the timeline for, for when we acquired the property from Wright State. And, you know, we've been talking about, you know, how can we potentially collaborate and, you know, how these projects might fit together for a really long time. Um, so originally, we envisioned going in three times for low-income housing tax credits um, to do a really big 54-unit senior apartment building. That was the original vision. We went in twice, and then we were we paused for a whole year waiting for um, funding scoring criteria to come out because it's in two-year cycles. It came out last week. <laughs> this is all hot off the press. So it came it came out last week, and we will not be competitive for long-term senior uh, housing tax credits. So that really big project is not moving forward. We're pivoting going back to the drawing board and um, invite you to be some of really the, the first investment, the first layer of local funds in to really help get this project reimagined and off the ground in an achievable uh, way. So we're planning this year, we'll be starting on, on pre-development activities as soon as we get some funding for pre-development. Um, and then typically we layer in funding, so we need a relatively um, smaller layer of local funds, and then we use that to go out to uh, the Ohio Housing Finance Agency and the Federal Home Bank of Cincinnati and these other places that are tried and true. And it, it'll have to be developed in phases, it's not gonna happen all at once. Um, I don't have anything to show you, which is typically a no-no when you're coming to a public meeting, mm -hmm. but I also just felt like I, we couldn't pass up on the opportunity to approach you when you have this pot, one one-time pot of money for infrastructure. Um, but if you if you invested in the project, we put it to very good use, and you would be part of helping to leverage um, millions of dollars from outside of the township to make this really long-held, very well-documented public need and good uh, possible. So I put a few different um, just suggestions. Also, if you would prefer that we spend the money on something else, there are, I mean, I can come with a different proposal in terms of, you know, if you'd rather have it be infrastructure on site or something like that. But um, the biggest, most immediate need is for pre-development funding. Um, and so that would be architectural drawings, civil engineering, um, other things that we need funding for are soil borings and environmental site assessment. There are a lot of different kinds of surveys. And then there are a whole suite of other pre-development costs that I didn't include in here. Um, but these are just some examples of how we can put the, the funding to, to good use. So um, we also understand that there is one, one pot of money and that there are a lot of really good and important uses relative to the increased calls um, from the Miami Township Fire Rescue, and so, you know, we're not coming and asking for all of it, but I think a, a piece of it would have an outsized impact in terms of its return on investment for a really long time uh, to meet this, this very important and pressing need. How about if we put that in the context of the further discussion of part or part five. <coughs> mm -hmm. Sure. So we're going to combine what you just introduced with the uh, notes from Saturday's meeting, mm -hmm. uh, in which housing was a significant part. Mm -hmm. Do people have copies of? No. We already have one. Thank you. Others have notes from.